properly breathe with their diaphragm to keep their rib cage over their pelvis, it helps to kind of start in the triple flexion position. So that's on your back with your knees, ankles, and hips all at 90 degrees. The head is slightly supported. So in this position, I want you to focus on keeping your spine flat against the table. So letting the rib cage depress. And then from here, we're going to place something underneath of our legs, like a physio ball um, or scooting our, our, our butt up into an ottoman. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to put one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. For beginners, we just want to focus on deep breath in through the nose. Belly button goes towards the ceiling. If you look down, you kind of see those little hollow cavities in a pair of blue jeans. Like That's where we want to breathe into. So you can even kind of take your fingers, place them on the front of your pelvis, and breathe. And keep your spine flat and supported in the, into the table. So what this looks like, if you can imagine, if I were to stand up but maintain this position, is this is kind of what uh, bottom of a squat to parallel looks like. So we're just going to kind of activate the diaphragm, relax the muscles, kind of focus on breathing in 360 degrees. So once you kind of breathe into your belly, then you want to go to the sides and then eventually into the back. So from there, you can kind of add, so if you're in a supported position, if you have something underneath your legs, then from there you can do like an ISO hold where you just lift one leg up, hold for a few seconds, slowly bring back down, lift one up. So it's always breath and then lift. Exhale, breath, then lift. And then from there we can make it a little bit harder and do this dead bug where we go opposite arm, opposite leg, still maintaining our spinal positioning, maintaining that pressure. So I'm able to hold pressure here talk throughout the movement while still maintaining pressure. So you should be able to breathe and still keep that pressure. You can even grab a kettlebell and let it go back and you're avoiding that extension. So don't let the, the rib cage flare. So that's the triple flexion position starting to stabilize in 360 degrees um, in the lumbar spine. So what I like to see eventually will progress patients to adding the dead bug, the opposite, uh, opposite arm, opposite leg. But then we want to kind of add some load so we can have them hold a kettlebell. So they're in this position and then as they go back, the rib cage is wanting to flare. It's wanting to do that kind of arching the low back. You have to fight that. Keep the rib cage down. Keep that abdominal wall pressurized. Let that go all the way back. Touch and come up. So this is starting to train anti-extension in the lumbar spine being able to pressurize that canister, you can even add a leg as you go back and do a little bit of a hold and come back up. So that's kind of the next step after you master being able to maintain that rib cage over that pelvis. So if you always tell patients, if you have a bucket of water, if your pelvis is a bucket of water, it should keep the water in. We're not dumping it too far out this way, excuse me, this way, where we pour water out the front and it's not rounding the back and pouring water out the back. Either extreme is more likely to find injury, so we want to kind of stay in that nice, what we can believe to be neutral rib cage over pelvis. So eventually we need to kind of take this off the table and apply it to a real life situation. The best way to do that for a squat is to start with a goblet squat. So I'm going to have a kettlebell and I'm going to hold underneath my chin very close to my center of mass. I'm going to find the self-selected squat that I like as far as distance with my feet. And then before I start to move, I want to focus on depressing the rib cage, keeping that rib cage down, breathing into my belly in 360 degrees. So then I'm going to kind of do that breath. I'm going to keep my rib cage down. I'm going to move into a comfortable position. I'm going to keep that pressure and I'm going to come up. And then when you get to the top, you can start to release some of that tension through purse lifts. This is why a lot of weightlifters or powerlifters eventually kind of yell as they kind of ex exhale that breath with their voice. Um, I just want you to kind of, through a purse lift, just kind of breathe out. And then, same thing, keep that rib cage down. We're going to keep that pressure, sit back in, come back up. So how that looks from the side is we're going to focus on rib cage down, tighten through our belly, sit here, and up. And just getting comfortable kind of timing that pattern, being able to kind of create tension throughout the abdominal wall, relax tension a little bit at the top as you breathe out and then back in to create pressure, and then sit in here.
all the while we're keeping that rib cage down. So my rib cage is over my pelvis. The goblet squat, and then from here, we can kind of grab the barbell, get back under the bar, and whatever squat tends to work better for you, whether it's front squat, high bar back squat, low bar back squat we have. That's number five in the, in the waist to squat, or waist to improve your squat list.